My guest today on raising private money, well, they've already raised $460,000 in private money for their real estate deals. And this was done pretty quick. In addition to that, in a short period of time, using this private money that they've raised for their real estate deals, they've already done three deals, uh, grossing right around $150,000 on these three deals because they had the private money ready to go. They live in a small area, a uh, target market, just like mine and Carol Joy's. Uh, their target market is only about 45,000 people. Well, this is a husband and wife dynamic duo that you are getting ready to meet. Uh, the husband of this couple, he let his day job go uh, not too long ago. So he's full-time in real estate now. And his wife, she still has the day job as a bookkeeper. So I was asking them before we went here on the show, tell me, what is it about private money that really, really just knocked your socks off when you started using it? And they said, well, first of all, they being a new real estate investor, they knew that the bank would be hesitant to even loan them money on their deals. Um, of course, in this world, there is no application fee. Secondly, they said, you know, if I went to buy or borrow money from the banks, they're going to want a down payment. And they didn't have much money saved up in this world of private money. You don't need any money saved up for down payments. And then thirdly, they were telling me that their confidence just soared out the ceiling with the money burning a hole in their pocket so that they started making so many more offers and getting more deals and offers accepted. So with that, I'm so excited to have on the show here with me. You're going to meet them in just a moment. My good friends, Kelly and Becky Castles, you're going to meet them right after this. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Becky and Kelly, welcome to Raising Private Money. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, Jay. So <laughs> excited to have you all here. I tell you, you all are like, you know, the poster children, right? In this world of private money now, raising so much private money so quickly, doing deals. You know, you are full time now, Kelly. Um, I know Becky's going to be right behind you here pretty shortly. Yes. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you know what we say, be free in 23, right? So um, I want us to go ahead and dive in here because I know our listeners and audience really want to hear your story. You're in a small market, only mm -hmm. about 45,000 people. How can you do this business in such a small market, y'all? Well, people are still buying and selling houses. Uh, I think any size town, there's people moving in and out and there's always houses uh, that need to be, need to be bought by somebody <laughs> and lived yeah, in. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I tell, in fact, I was, I had a guest on the show here recently and, um, and, and this particular person was told some time ago, years back, um, by some guru education company that, you know, they, they just couldn't do this business unless they were at least a 200,000 population area. And, you know, like you all, my wife, Carol Joy and I, we've been investing now full time in single family houses here in Eastern North Carolina with only a population of 40,000 that, that we are target marketing. We do two to three deals a month. Right now, we're averaging profits of $78,000. So, you know, for that to happen, you got to have the private money ready to go. You got to have your marketing in place. Of course, in today's market, um, you know, there's, there's no inventory in the multiple listing service. We're not going to be buying anything out of there to speak of. So, of course, we got to have our marketing in place uh, that's consistent, that we have owners of houses for sale by owners that are reaching out to us. Yeah. So I, I want to, I want you all to share your journey. So you began, you know, investing in real estate. Uh, what market uh, are you all in? 
Uh, we're in San Juan County um, in New Mexico, which is the very northwest corner of the state. So we're really close to Arizona, Utah, and Colorado. So I know you had done maybe a deal or so. What did your business, what did your real estate investing business look like prior uh, to you starting to use private money? Well, we were trying to do um, no money down deals um, subject to creative financing. And there's, there's a certain market for that. Um, but like you said, that's not as many, you know, a low percentage of deals that's out there. So uh, private money really changed that. Changed the world. Yes. In my situation, um, we were already investing in single family houses uh, for six years mm. before I even heard about private money. So it's from 2003 until 2009, we were investing and I, and I was relying on the local banks. That's all I knew to do, right? Uh, back from my mobile home history. And then something happened, something happened in January of 2009 to where it was a pivotal point in our business to where I, to where I knew I had to find a better and quicker way to fund my deals. Hence, I learned about private money and started using private money. So my question to you, what was it in your real estate investing business? What is it that changed? What was the pivotal moment that you said, you know what? I need to start using private money. What happened? You want to answer that? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I would say that um, because we're in a small market um, and even though there are deals, there are a lot of people that want all cash and just having the funds to be able to make offers. Uh, really, we knew that that's what we had to have. We needed to have that uh, avenue available to us to make offers for houses. And, and you made that very clear. It's all about getting the money first. And as soon as we got um, our first private lender, my confidence shot through the roof. Um, it was really eye opening how easy it was going to be to make offers and make deals. And uh, and it took a little while um, because it was so competitive um, in the last year in this area. Um, and but uh, we put some money to work and. Uh, and now, like I say, we've got three deals. That's awesome. And of course, just to be clear, when we're talking private money here with Becky and Kelly, just like myself, private money, we're talking about doing business with individuals, right? Mm -hmm. People are using their investment capital. They're using their retirement funds uh, to loan money on our deals. So when we're talking about using private money to fund our real estate deals, we're not talking about any kind of institutional money. We're not talking about getting money from banks. We're not talking about getting money from hard money lenders at all. So this is all about doing business with individuals. So Kelly and Becky, I want to hear the story. How did you find your first private lender and tell us all about that? You know, uh, well, we had a webinar with you and um, after going through the webinar within minutes uh, that we were done with that, we got our first phone call uh, from people that were watching. And uh, uh, he's been a, a longtime family friend and uh, he believes in us. You know, mm -hmm. that's a big deal. And um, he jumped on board. Wonderful. So <clears throat> I'm curious to know your statistics. I know what mine are. I'll tell you mine. You can share with me yours. Okay. So Carol, Joy, and I right now, we've got 47 private lenders, individuals that are funding our real estate deals. And not one of those 47 private lenders, first of all, had ever heard of private lending until I told them about it taught them what private lending was. And um, over half of them are using their retirement funds that they have transferred over to a self-directed IRA company to where they can use their retirement funds, invest in our deals, loan money on our deals and get returns either tax deferred or tax free. Not one of those had ever heard of self-directed IRAs. None of them had ever heard of private money. My question to you, Becky and Kelly, 
of your private lenders. So, you know, you've already, you've already raised $460,000 in private money of your private lenders. How many had ever heard of private money and what it was? Zero. Zero. I think we have something in common here, right? <laughs> yeah, very much, right? Yeah. So, so, so here's what's interesting. And I get this question all the time. How in the world can you, how in the world are people going to invest in you? How are they going to learn about your private lending program? And they've never even heard of what private money is and what private lending is and what self-directed IRAs are. And Kelly and Becky, we say it all the time, right? Put on your teacher hat. <laughs> yes. Right? I yes. love your teacher hat yeah. and be a private money teacher. Yeah. Right? I got to so, give me one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you, uh, if you never, I mean, if you've got private lenders, which you do, that have never loaned you money, I mean, and never loaned anybody money, private money, right? Never right. heard of separate IRAs. Um, so you start teaching them and having conversations. You become a private money teacher and teach them what it's all about. So how do you, so we did a webinar together. We did. Yep. That you had invited to the webinar, but when you're just out and about, you know, talking with people, um, how do you start up conversations, you know, with someone that might be interested in this? How do you get the word out? How do you like let people know what you're doing? Well, um, you know, a, a lot of the times um, we're talking to people. Uh, I belong to a BNI group, so I introduce that on a regular basis there. Now, tell so, everybody what is what is BNI? What's that stand for, and what is it? Uh, business networking, and it's a um, local businesses that meet in a chapter once a week, and uh, we meet early in the morning. And uh, phenomenal group. I mean, there's a range of people from banking to um, construction to plumbing and electrical and insurance, all kinds of people. And, uh, you know, the giver's gain is their um, motto and, and, and you become salespeople for other businesses as you learn about them and about what they do. And, uh, but, you know, we're, we're, we've got a company called The Fresh Start and we buy and sell houses. And, uh, and the way we do that is private lenders fund our deals and they make an insane uh, rate on their uh, investment. So um, none of your private lenders had ever heard of private money. Yeah. Uh, that's how you start conversations. So have you ever asked anybody for money? Never. Oh. So, so how does that work? How in the world, do you get funding for your real estate deals and you don't ever ask anybody for money? How in the world can you do that? Well, it, the program, it really speaks for itself. The fact mm -hmm. that their money is backed by real property um, with a, a note and a mortgage really takes the risk out of it for most people. Um, and, you know, we have a personal relationship with all of them as well. I mean, they know us. But the fact that it's um, being invested into real property is it's it's really attractive. Absolutely. And obviously the rate of return is very attractive. You know, and, Kelly? <laughs> well, and another thing is, is our private lenders, they understand they're going to make great money uh, on, the, on their return. But also they're investing in the community because we are helping people. Um, we're providing solutions for people that are um, in uh, high risk situations or, you know, pre foreclosure, um, maybe a divorce, who knows, um, what the situation is. And so they understand that, um, they're investing in our community as well, helping people, um, uh, getting through those situations. I want y'all to go back to before you had private money, all right? <laughs> uh, you had done a deal, you had talked to a bunch of, um, owners of houses that, you tried to buy on creatively subject to the existing no right terms. And, uh, I would imagine you heard quite a few people tell you, uh, no, I want all the money, right? I mm -hmm. want all the money. That's mm -hmm. the real world. In fact, my statistics are of all the for sale by owners we talk to only 13% will sell to us 
creatively without getting all the money up front. 87% of them require all the money. So I want you to go back. I want you to think a moment what it felt like when you were talking to these sellers over the phone for sale by owners and you were talking to them about selling to you creatively, they wouldn't do it. You remember what that felt like. And then you were able to break through and raise your own private money. Um, wow. What did it feel like when you got that breakthrough? Uh, it didn't even feel like the same business. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's a whole, it was just a whole nother world. That was a, a lot more positive, a lot, you know, a lot of hope for us as far as actually being able to, you know, buy and sell houses. Would you say it took the volume. stress? Would you say it took the stress off of making offers? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. yes. Yeah. And our confidence uh, went through the roof. Um, yeah. And it was really, there was a moment there um, when we got our first private lender, I felt like I was walking about six inches above the ground. <laughs> um, and uh, it was just a great feeling knowing um, that this whole market really opened up uh, for us because of that. Yeah. Well, you know, there's lots of ways to control or buy a property or do this business. You know, mm -hmm. you can be a wholesaler. You know, if you're a wholesaler, you don't need private money. I mean, you can get a, you know, get a house under contract. You can assign that contract to another real estate investor to take it down, get it, you know, get an assignment fee. Um, personally, I like 78,000 better than 7,800. I've stayed in every deal that I've ever done for 20 years. Uh, so, you know, you can wholesale, you can, you know, you can control on lease option. And then when it comes to actually buying, well, you can buy creatively with a, you know, a small percentage of the sellers subject to the existing no seller financing, et cetera. Um, but as we just, as we just said, you know, the majority of the sellers are going to want all the money. So if they want all the money, where can you get the money? Well, if, 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 if they want all the money, like I did the first six years, you can borrow money from the local bank, or you can get a line of credit at the local bank, a commercial line of credit. If in today's market, you have stellar credit, if you yeah. have stellar credit and if you have stellar financial statements. Mm -hmm. And if you have experience right. buying yeah. and selling houses, right? Yeah. So you can go to the local bank if all, and you know, if, if, if you qualify all that criteria, but you can go to a hard money lender, right? You can go to a hard money lender, which is a broker of private money. Um, and you can pay in today's market, you know, 14% three points on origination fees, extension fees, you know, have to bring a $20,000, I mean, excuse me, 20% down payment okay. out of your own pocket. So you can go to a hard money lender where they like the banks are still making the rules, but then you can use private money like you are to fund your deals. So I've got about 15 reasons why I love private money. I'm not going to ask you to name 15 reasons <laughs> why you love private money, but from your experience, why do, when it comes to doing deals, the logistics of doing deals, the interest rates, the loan to values, who's in control, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, appraisals, credit scores, verification of income, et cetera, et cetera. What are your favorite reasons for using private money in this business? We yes. can close quickly. The fact that we don't have to do any of those things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can close quick. Well, talk about, talk about that, uh, Kelly. Um, how, how fast can you close and why is that important? Well, it's important to the sellers because they're, they're in a bad situation that they, they really need to get out of. And so, you know, as soon as the, uh, here in New Mexico, as soon as the title search is done and, we get it through there. We can, we can close it up because yeah. you've got the money within a couple of weeks. Yeah. Do you get more offers accepted because you can close quicker? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So closing quickly can be important to a motivated seller mm -hmm. uh, or is important to mm -hmm. a motivated seller. So you can close quickly. I mean, you know, you go to the local bank, it's probably 30 days, 45 days, approximately. If you're using traditional money, hard money lenders, um, a lot of them will close within three weeks to four weeks. Right. Uh, so they can do the quick thing, but so quick closings, um, using private money. Do you ever have to take a down payment? No, no, no. 
<laughs> so that right, that right there is sort of like a, an aha moment, right? You can actually buy real estate with no down payment. Mm -hmm. So no, so no, so all private money deals is no down payment out of your pocket, right? right? Um, and of course, I get asked the question all the time, Kelly and Becky, how can you do a real estate deal with no skin in the game, right? I yeah. mean, you got to have skin in the game, right? And what they're talking about is you got to bring liquidity. You got to bring some cash to the closing table. Well, I can tell you from my own personal experience in this world of private money, the skin in the game is the equity in the property that is protecting the private lender. Yeah. Because of course we don't borrow unsecured money. We, we give the private lenders a security. We give them a mortgage or a deed of trust, just like we were borrowing money from the bank and they're named on the insurance policy and et cetera. So they are the bank, right? right. But back to more reasons why you love private money. Um, so you don't have to take any money to a closing table. Have you ever closed on a private money deal and you actually brought money back home from the closing table? Yes. Yes. Rehab money. <laughs> yeah. How can you do that? Now, right? I, I, I want our, I want our audience to get get you know their mind wrapped around this. You're gonna buy a uh, you're gonna buy a piece of real estate, a single family house, for example. You're not gonna take any of your own money to the closing table. Mm -hmm. nope. Your credit score was not checked. Your verification of income was not checked. Nope. Uh, did you have to get an appraisal done? Nope. Nope. So you didn't have to get an appraisal done. You were using probably your realtor CMA yes. and you're taking yeah. no money to the closing table and you're picking up a big check from your attorney or closing agent title company. When you bought the house, how in the world can you do that? <laughs> um, it's amazing. <laughs> um, just follow the formula for um, keeping the lenders protected with the percentage of uh, value that you borrow for the house and it'll happen. Yes. Yeah, so the, the secret sauce in this obviously is we're not going to be able to bring home a big check when we buy a house and not take any down payment, unless you are buying those houses at discounted prices. Yep. Very you're buying them at, you're not, you're not paying retail. Nope. No, you're buying them at discounted prices. They are motivated sellers and you're probably not going to pick up a big check. Well, let's stop right there on the big check. <laughs> when you, I mean, you've done multiple deals. Just for example, give us one example. How, how big of a check did you bring home when you bought a property and didn't take any money to the, to the closing table? Um, $50,000. Yeah. So let's get this straight. You bought a house none of your own money, took none of your own money to the closing table, no down payment, and you picked up a $50,000 check when you bought. Correct. Correct. Who wants to get paid to buy houses? <laughs> so, but of course, you're not going to pick up a $50,000 check, as I said, unless you're buying it at a discounted price. And secondly, you're not going to pick up a $50,000 check when you buy, unless you're going to have a renovation involved because you're going to use that money yes. for the renovation, right? Yes. Correct. Yep. Yep. So what's the street address of that, of that property you're telling me about? Don't give me the township, but give me the street address. Uh, 1436 Blanco Boulevard. 1436 what Boulevard? Blanco. Blanco Boulevard. Blanco Boulevard. So on that particular property, you're picking up a $50,000 check, right? Mm -hmm. Do you, do you remember what the after repaired value was? It's about 300,000. Right. And you bought it for how much? 140. Wow. A $300,000 after repaired value. You're buying it for $140,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, how much you borrow? Well, 200 on this one. Okay. So 200. So you got a 60,000. So you're get you're picking up a $60,000 check less a little bit for closing Correct. costs. Correct. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, um, did you sleep better at night when you brought home a $60,000 check? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, and there's nothing wrong to get paid multiple times on these private money deals that we do. You get a check when you buy, get another check when you sell. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you got some carrying costs there to help you along the way. So it just really does take the stress out of, you know, doing these types of deals. Yeah. So 
So where, so I asked you where you're finding these private lenders. You mentioned Business Networking International, mm -hmm. um, Kelly, and, and, and that's, that, that organization has been so valuable and important to me. And I would tell our listeners, if you have not heard of or familiar with Business Networking International, uh, just Google them. It's a fantastic organization, um, you know, whether you're looking to raise private money or not but you're investing in real estate, a great way for people, you know, in the, you know, community to really learn about you. All right. So always things are not always hunky dory. Sometimes things go sideways. <laughs> Sometimes things don't go as we planned. Always this fellow called Murphy mm -hmm. shows up in houses and Murphy is the guy that shows up with the unexpected renovations, cost of repairs, and et cetera. So I want you to share with our audience here, what is a big mistake? What is a big lesson that you've learned not to do anymore, not to do again? In other words, if you knew today when you're doing your next deal and negotiating on your next deal, if you knew back then on your first deal, what you now know today, what would you do different? What mistake would you not make again? Well, I will tell you, we've been really fortunate to um, not have any expensive mistakes yet. And let's all knock on some wood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I would say sometimes you underestimate how much just that finished work takes. Um, so don't underestimate the finishing work and getting everything cleaned up. Um, Cause sometimes that, that's a little bit more than you had expected for sure. Absolutely. And, and Murphy is a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, we know he's going to show up. Sometimes you bring some relatives with him <laughs> and uh, you know, so uh, planning the planning out uh, with our contractor um, is yeah. a big deal. And uh, we have a contractor uh, that we walk through the property with before we purchase it um, just to have extra set of eyes on it. And uh We've been really close. I've been within $2,000 of my estimates with his, his estimates without even bringing that forward. So, um, but, uh, you know, walking property, a property is a little different than when you start re rehabbing it. Exactly. So, you know, there's all kinds of ways to raise private money to get the word out. Um, what is your favorite method? for raising private money. There's one-on-one -on -one conversations, there's webinars, there's sharing what you do at BNI, there's um, being at the Starbucks coffee shop on a cell phone and talking loud enough so the next door neighbor can hear you talking about your deal and your private lenders and now they're coming over and leaving their business card because now they're interested in what you're talking about. Um, you know, there's people you go to church with and, you know, like myself, I'm visiting with one of the one of the fellows that I've known for a while after church about, you know, how I'm now needing their help to help spread the word that I'm letting investors in and paying high rates of return. You know, the list just goes on and on and on and on this private lender luncheons, mm -hmm. you know, you know, where, where we raise a lot of private money, these luncheons. If you could just choose one, what's your favorite way to raise private money? Gosh, if we could just choose one, it'd probably be one on ones. Yeah. And why? And why is that? Just because you're having this um, really personal conversation with someone where you can um, really dive in about the business in addition to what the private money can do for them. Yeah. So when you're having a one, so let's drill down on that for a moment. When you're having a one on one conversation uh, with someone about, you know, private money, sort of spell out for us what that conversation sounds like, meaning, um, I mean, how important is it to like even have your private lending program in place that you can even tell them how this program works? You know, and so we do, we have a PowerPoint that we share and what's great about a one-on-one -on -one is they're going to ask questions along the way because they want the whole picture. Right. Yep. And so you can go through that uh, slide by slide and, um, um, you know, and get all their answers, um, give them the answers that they need uh, to fill. 
safe and secure when they're going to invest. And that's what it is. You drill down on, on that point of um, they're just like the bank. They're going to be um, in the position of the bank and they're going to be secured just like the bank is. Awesome. But so you like the one on one. They can answer questions. Yeah. Go ahead, Becky. Just uh, and even if you're just having a quick conversation where you're not um, using any kind of PowerPoint, you know, you have that in your mind and those questions come through and you can kind of go through it. Um, you know what's what the order is that you're telling people about how it works. And um, they're really curious, really curious and um, excited to listen to what we have to say because, mm -hmm. you know, we're we're new in it. So everybody wants to know what you're doing. Um, so when we talk about the real estate investing and then we say, well, this is the way we're funding it. We talk about the private money. It, it just um, brings up a, a whole new conversation. Just That's really fantastic. curiosity. What kind of interest rate are you paying right now to your private lenders? 8% on the large money and 10% uh, on smaller amounts for rehab. Okay. Well, even in today's market where CD rates are, you know, a little bit higher in the bank, 8%, 10%, that's a fantastic return. Yeah. Well, for our audience, I can tell you, I've been working with Becky and Kelly for some time now. I guess it's been a little over a year, mm -hmm. uh, yes. about, right out of a year that we've been uh, working together. And I tell you what, I don't know anybody else that's got any more integrity and I don't know anybody else that's any more fun to be around <laughs> Becky and Kelly. Yeah. And I tell you what, they, um, they are just fantastic people to do business with. So I tell you what, Becky and Kelly, we have thousands of people that are listening to this show right now. And um, there's probably some folks listening to this show that are sick and tired of the uh, small returns that they can get on their money. They would love to, to invest. They would love to get high rates of return safely and securely, uh, all backed by real estate, uh, earning those kind of interest rates. So when someone wants to reach out to you, what's the best way to locate and reach out to Becky and Kelly Castles? Um, probably the best way is on our website, uh, which is www.afreshstart.info. And we do have a contact us button there that will go directly to our email. Um, we also have Facebook, which is uh, Facebook Castles by Houses um, and Instagram at a fresh start in M. Awesome. Awesome. So I want to go back through these one more time. Okay. So first of all, that website, if we can pull that up there. So Kelly and Becky's website is www.afreshstart, just like it sounds, afreshstart.info is their website. In addition to that, there are other ways for the contact. There. So on Facebook, you can find them on Facebook, Castles, C-A-S-S-E-L-S, Mm -hmm. buy houses, castles, buy houses. And then their Instagram is at a fresh start NM for New Mexico. Kelly and Becky, thank you so much for joining me here on raising private money. What an inspiration you are with the journey that you're enjoying and that you're sharing with everyone else. Thank you so much for coming along. Final comments before we wrap it up. Uh, we thank you, Jay. Thanks yeah. for introducing us to the world of private money. Obviously, um, changed our life and uh, we couldn't have done it without you. Thank you so much, Jay. <laughs> thank you for joining me. God bless you all. And there you have it. And thank you, my friend, for joining us here on Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And if you found this inspirational, if you found this episode valuable, you picked up some aha moments, be sure and Click that bell if you're watching YouTube. If you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, be sure to follow so you don't miss out on the next upcoming amazing episode of Raising Private Money. Here's to taking your business to the next level. I'm wishing you all the best, and we'll see you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconnor.com slash moneyguide. That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R dot com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.